Mike, as of right now, we are halfway through 2023. Mm. Have there been any good games? Nope, but let's talk about them anyway. Just kidding, there's been great ones. <laughs> there's been good ones. There's the top 10 of them. What's up, everybody? My name is Nick. I'm Mike. We are the Brothers Murph, and we're talking about our top 10 games from 2023 so far. So these are games that we have played. Yes. And that are coming out in 2023. Yeah, so this is like the mid-year Oscars. Yes. You know, we're about to have all the big conventions of the year. Yep. Gen Con, uh, Essen are coming up Absolute where a lot of those yeah. releases happen. But it's nice to look back at the midpoint because there's already been great games yes. and we don't want them to get swallowed up before the end of the year comes. Indeed, so These yeah. are like our mid-year Oscars. You yeah. know, if, if we were given the, the awards right now, these would be the 10 games that we think so far are the bomb. Indeed. And so these are be games that we know are coming out this year. So right. there's a lot of like Kickstarters that say, this is gonna release 2023. Will it? And so we're, we, these are only games either out or we know for a fact they're gonna be out. Mm -hmm. Let's get to the top 10. Number 10 is a tiny little game, very quick little game called Broken and Beautiful. Yes, this is a set collection game ultimately, but it's got kind of a fun twist. So it, it, uh, it centers around the idea of kintsugi, which is yes. a, a, a process of restoring pottery. Yes. Old ceramics that have broken, uh, you then know, like, are now useless. You kind of glue them back together with using gold. gold. Yes, yes. It's basically you use saying gold. it's broken, but now it comes back more beautiful, stronger, things like that. Absolutely. So this is something that in uh, Japanese culture, it was something that would make this piece of pottery now more valuable than yeah. ever before because of its imperfections and yes. everything like that. So there's a set collection game where you can collect sets of like, uh, teapots yeah. and cups and saucers and Plates, things, like, things that. like that. Yeah. But every kind of round you're drafting out these cards, there's going to be one or two types of things that will potentially break. So it means if you have any of them in front of you, they are going to break. They are now worthless. But you also have the ability to acquire gold in the game. And as you acquire gold, you can then spend that gold to repair pieces, flip those cards over. Yeah. And now they are more valuable than ever. And beyond that, it's a super simple set collection yes. game. Each type of... of uh, ceramic wants to be um, collected in a different way. Yep. And then every time you have those ones that are flipped over with the gold inlay, now they're just, they're a multiplier of some kind. Yeah, they they're add worth the more in some way. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, whether it's a multiplier, just they're just worth more points. And so, yeah, and so you're basically trying to do that. And so you're drafting kind of out these cards and trying to figure out, okay, okay, we know this is gonna break. Can I fix all these in time? Do I need to get gold? And so it's just yeah. a little set collection game, super tiny little game. You're playing with fire a little bit because you do want stuff to break. You but do. you run the risk of it being worthless because if it's just there broken at the end of the game, it's like, well, it would have been be better if I had taken yeah. this card so those things didn't break and I could have had some points, now I have yeah. nothing. So there's, there's a lot of little... It's all set collection. So it's, yeah. it's interesting being like, oh, I'm gonna take this because Mike already has three of those. And I don't want him yeah. to get more of them. And so it's a really cool little game. Uh, I, we got to play it and it's a, it's a, it's a great little game with a yeah. cool theme it's, it's just a, a good twist on very simple set collection yeah, totally. which i think is kind of nice and we haven't had in a while indeed so that's number 10 let's get to number nine number nine i believe is available just now like i think it just finally yeah. is available just this is books of time by yes. board and dice this is a game this is like a civilization themed game but you're just essentially writing about you're your kind civilization. You're kind of telling the story of a civilization through, yeah, through writing. So you actually have these books, these physical books. Like great little, gimmick in this little game. Little binders, kind of. These yeah. little binders that you're going to be slotting in pages of these books, which are going to give you access to actions to take. Yeah. Uh, and as you take the actions, you're going to basically, your book's always going to be laid open. And whatever the two actions you can see from the from the back of one page and the front of another, those are the actions you're going to be taking. If you yep. choose that, there's a few tracks that you can bump up as well. And what's really cool is this one feels, A, the gimmick of the pages. Because when you it's finish that cool. turn, you're going to turn the pages. Yeah. And now you have new, two new actions. It's very cool. So you cool. kind of program, I guess, in a way, actions, kind of. a little bit sequencing. But it gives you a lot of that kind of board and dice feel. There's some tracks to bump up. There's, uh, you know, almost like a little bit of engine building with the way that mm -hmm. you put your pages into your books. A little bit of set collection, again, with how you organize those books and stuff like that. But it's much lighter than a, yes. than a, a typical, like, a Teotihuacan, for example. Yes, yes. So it gives you some of that flavoring mm -hmm. um, of a board and dice game, but keeps it light. Uh, the art's really interesting yes. and cool. really pretty. The, the pages gimmick is really interesting yes. and cool. But um, matters like it's a gimmick that makes sense. One, it makes sense in the game, and two, it, like it yeah, matters again, because you're writing a book. You're putting these books in, like Mikey said. Like sometimes you want things in certain orders, and so you're you're trying to like, oh, no, I need to turn this page and then put this new page here yeah. because I need these things to be in this order. And on top of that, it's just again, it's just cool. Like you're like, oh, I do this one, this action, this action. Flip the page. Now I have two two different actions. It's just a cool concept, a really cool gimmick. And ultimately, it's a, a nice little medium weight game. Absolutely, yeah. So if you're looking for a board and dice, slightly light, not as light like as maybe like a Zapotec or something, but in that middle, yep. Books of Time is one we recommend. That's number nine. All right, let's get number eight. Number eight 
it just has no right to be as fun as it is, but no. it is. And this is, that's not a hat. It's a simple game. That's a hat. This is a hat, but you could say that's not a hat. This is a simple and silly <laughs> it's so, memory game, like a party yes. memory game. Yes. Where you are going to be sending gifts around a table. Indeed. Of a bunch of kind of very simplistically sketched Like a items. bucket, a hat, a, a traffic dog, cone, a skateboard, just a strawberry. And it's just like a pencil outline. Like yeah. just very simple, yeah. Super simple. And so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be getting these cards, but you're going to be putting them face down. Yes. And there's going to be arrows, which will dictate either have to pass it to the player to your left or the player to your right. And you can send gifts, like here's the skateboard, enjoy the skateboard. Enjoy this dog. Now the problem is, that as these things are face down and things start shifting this way and that way, you will very quickly forget start losing track. what <laughs> is on the table. And yeah. Especially if we're playing like a six player game, what you announce at the beginning, so at the very beginning of the round, we know what everyone has. Yes. But it's you'll forget that even really quickly. Yeah. And it's, it just creates so many giggles. Because the whole point of the game, and we were not doing this at all, and yeah. I feel like this you're is supposed a to bluff. <laughs> you're supposed to bluff. You'll be like, here's this frog. And you're supposed to be very confident about it. Whether but we just, it. none of us were. We were just like, oh, God, what's in front of me? Is it the bucket? Is it the frog? What is it? And then be like, hat. enjoy this hat? And then, again, if you think someone's wrong, you go, that's not a frog. And you flip it over to see if you're right or wrong. Yeah, you can and challenge so, people. It's just so much fun because you you immediately forget where everything is. Forget like, about it. You're like, okay, that's that, that's that, that's that. okay, boom. And then they move twice, you're immediately like, wait, where's the flower? Where is it yeah. here? Is you it in front of me? Now? Big and bold thing, my mind's a steel trap. Like, no, no it's not. You're it's trash. A, a leaky yeah. sieve, and this game is gonna prove it to you. But it's just so funny to see people have zero confidence in their convictions, yes. being like, enjoy this. Dog, and you're like, <laughs> I don't think so, but I'm not going to challenge you because I also don't know, don't know if that's the truth. <laughs> exactly. And it's so funny to see everyone just reduced to like a, a even playing yeah. field. It's really really fun. <laughs> it's just a, a tiny little tiny game, little box, yeah. super small, super easy, but just an absolute blast. Yeah, super fun. Number seven is also we actually had a couple of smaller games here. Uh, it's kind of good to hear from right now. This is Nomalia. We actually saw a demo copy of this at PAX Unplugged last year. We finally got this game. Yeah. This game is so, so much fun. This is a game where you are going to have um, goals, kind of like kind of cartographer style, where you're going to have like yeah. five goals. Scoring conditions. The first round uh, goals A and B are going to score. The next round B and C, then C and D, and then like A, C, B, and then basically. The last two rounds, three things are going to score. Yeah, so basically I think everything's going to score three times exactly. in the game. And, and those are, are randomized of like what's going to be valuable when and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, and you have these cards. These cards are going to have a couple different um, like biomes on them, like a desert or a savanna and a jungle. jungle. And then some kind of animal or maybe like a river or something like that, like a gorilla and stuff on there. And so what you're doing is you're putting them down. You can make at most a six by six grid. And then each card is kind of like a two by two um, grid. Mm -hmm. And you're putting them in a six by six grid and then you're trying to score these conditions. Conditions might be like you're gonna get three points for every penguin in a, a column or like in this specific area. Or if you have the most gorillas, or if you have gorillas, no polar bears, yeah, or you, you know. want giraffes next to lakes. There's yeah. like a whole bunch of these different you scoring a huge jungle. Yeah, you want to have all these things, and so you're building it out in that way where you're trying to score, because you're gonna score each thing three times, you're trying to be able to like work it in a way, and you, yeah. you constantly have to cover things up. Yeah, when you play something, again, there's a little two by two, so there's four squares yeah. essentially on anything. You have to cover up at least, at one, least one square of something that's been played before. Yes. So you're constantly building out biomes, tearing them down, yeah. modifying them for whatever is valuable right now. Yeah, and you know what's coming. You're like, okay, I know this is next, so I let me put this this gorilla here because it's not gonna help me right now, but it's gonna help me later. Yeah. But then you're, you're in that six by six grid, so you're going to run out of room, and then you have to be like, okay, I really want this long river for this one, but I think I have to break it up because I think this is gonna score me more points. And it's just super simple. The art's like cutesy and kind of cartoony, yeah, but it's great. really, really good. I yeah. like it so much. I really love the Isle of Sky cartographer's kind of style of scoring yes. where something's gonna come around two or three times yes. and it might be two rounds from now. So there's that question of like, how much do I, especially with this where you're covering stuff up, it's like, do I make sure I maintain this scoring thing? Yeah. Or do I let that go and maximize what's valuable right now? And you're also getting cards, you're drafting them around. So it's like, depending on what's available to you, you yeah. might have to make some changes. Yeah. Um, and it's just super it's fun, really fun, puzzly, Again, uh, really delightful, box, tiny box. Great little small game. Mm. I really like the Malia. It's my number seven. Let's go and get number six. Number six uh, is a very, very popular game, and we do like it quite a bit, and this is Earth. Absolutely, so Earth has uh, was was just storming for Man, a while, yeah. and I imagine it still is, and now it's more kind of widely available, and stuff. it's on Board Game Arena, works great on Board Game Arena, by the sure way. It sure does, yeah. This game is like Point City. Yeah. Like, you are getting points 
It's not the game point city. No, which is also great. Which also but you're points. getting you're getting points for every single thing that you do, basically. Yes. Every kind of thing you do is worth something. <laughs> Everything can be spent yeah. and turned into something that's worth more. Uh, but you're ultimately building an ecosystem of plants. Yes. Uh, and so there's all these different categories of plants, like fungi and, and trees and herbs flowers and, and herbs. Yeah. Uh, and you're going to be placing them into a four by four card tableau. And oftentimes they will be associated with certain actions. There's four types of actions you can do in the game. And if you take like the red action, for example, you're going to do the main action and then you're going to trigger any cards that have a red banner on it, basically yeah. that are associated with that action in order from top to bottom, left to right. Yeah. So you're getting all this stuff, but it's also an action follow um, type of game yep. so that everyone else is going to get to follow that action to a lesser version, mm -hmm. but they also trigger their entire tableau and any red cards they have. Yeah. So you have the ability to build these like super engines for Bonkers. yourself. Yeah. Tons of combos, synergies and stuff based on the types of cards you have, the cards that you're playing. Uh, there's kind of terrain cards, which would give scoring based on kind of the proximity to different yeah, things. Maybe and the way you lay out that ability. tableau. Yeah. And it's cool. On like on you on said, on. cause it's like, there's a lot of, there's especially three things. They have there's sprouts, which are essentially like little seeds. There's growth. You're actually building like a three thing and there's composting cards and all of those are worth points. Like every yep. sprout you have is worth it's a point. point. But the thing is, there's a lot of your cards that allow you to spend sprouts and spend growth and spend composite cards. So everything in the game is kind of both points and currency. Yeah. And balancing that, you're like, well, I can get rid of two sprouts. It gives me three growth. That's a plus one point right there. So you're like, I'm, that's a better deal for me. But you then have to have that sprout engine going so you can keep doing that. And it's just, it's really fun. There's like a billion different cards. Yeah. They're all, for the most part, unique. And so like... You just have so many different options. I really, really like this game. I think this game will stick around because it's just, it's so variable. It's got really great photography in it. It's just yeah. a cool game. Earth it's is It's a fun. really, really cool game. And you're always engaged with it because you're doing stuff on your turn and off your turn. Yes. So you're never, there's no downtime. Yes. Really, really fun. Doesn't take too long. That is Earth, our number six. All right, let's get number five. Number five is a solo only game. I love it. And this is Legacy of You. Legacy yes. of You is a Garfield game, and it's solo only, which is I always I'm always intrigued by solo only games. Because yes. you're like, it's kind of like a two-player only game where I'm like, so many publishers I feel like try to make games player counts that they really shouldn't be at. But yeah, this is three to, to make five. His, it's yeah. like it's three to four. It's not three to five. Yeah. You know, kind of thing. And so I'm always intrigued by they're like, no, it's one player. Yeah, this, That's is, all this is. is what this game and is. And Legacy of You is so good. Yeah, Legacy of You is a resettable campaign game yeah. where you are going to and be... you're only going to see like 40% of the campaign yeah, so in like a play, so you're absolute, not going to see everything. Yeah, yeah, there's absolute replayability. And in a campaign, you're probably going to play at least 10 games. Yeah. Um, so it's quite a bit. But um, in this game, you're trying to to kind of do a lot of stuff. You're kind of trying to deal with the elements as they're coming at you. Kinda. There's Basically, the Yellow River is flooding constantly and, and endangering the lives of, of villagers who are trying to like live near by there's also barbarians who are threatening uh, the lands as well and you're trying to build canals for the river to make that more safe to yep. deal with and stuff and that's dangerous work as it goes and as you do that as you kind of progress through a game and get more and more canals built more and more barbarians are going to start coming at you so you now have to start managing that yeah uh, as it comes managing the threats from from uh invaders from afar and stuff so uh it's a tough balance of resources yeah really tough this is basically like a resource efficiency game, yeah. I would say. Like, you're trying to eke out as much as you can out of the resources you're given, your pool of workers. Uh, different color workers can do different things and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So there's just a lot of, like, puzzling out. Yeah. How do I get as much as I can out of this round so I can maybe get a canal built, but I can't be overrun by the barbarians? Yep. How do I balance this as best I can yeah. to try to basically make it to the end of the game where you get a certain number of canals built, and then you also have to survive to the end of the round. And which that's is the not problem. Easy. Is I can usually get to the end. I just, I don't ever <laughs> so survive. So hard to survive. It's really hard. Um, and then as you, lo if you lose a game, you'll essentially get some stuff that'll probably make your next game a little bit easier. Yes. If you win games, it'll probably make it a little bit harder. It's kind of that pandemic legacy style yeah, where it's kind like, of self you're doing really good, it's gonna make the game harder. If you're doing really bad, the game will get a little bit easier. Um, and it's just it's just cool. It's really, really fun. And it's and it, I'm glad it's a solo game because you just want to get into your own little puzzle. Yes. So, okay, I'm gonna do this. Because you're constantly like doing this kind of push and pull with your cards and your resources and like trying to have enough. And it's so difficult. And you're just constantly getting over by barbarians. You have to either fight them or bribe them. And you're just like, get away, let me build my canal. Yeah, sure, that's survive <laughs> just over like... here. <laughs> and there's a cool little story. And again, you're not gonna unlock everything in the first place. So nope. you'll see probably about 40% of the game. So you can play it multiple times and still see some new stuff. But then even
even then, like, I've played, like, the first kind of, we have a, a, a non-spoiler version because we were covering it. Yeah. And, like, I've played that one a couple times, and that one alone is just fun. Like, yeah. I would just play that one because the puzzle itself is really, really fun. Yeah, then I've actually played through some of the campaign, and the stuff that you unlock is really Super interesting cool, and cool. Yeah. Creates new challenges and stuff like that. Another thing just to, to wax poetic even more, this is a nice contained box yes. size and a contained board. It is not very it's large. Like this big, the board? You can open up your board. I like to leave all the resources in the box because they're in little trays and it becomes like your little resource tray. Yeah. And so it's nice it's and flex. contained. You have a nice it's little a contained. Flex. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, this is really good. You can play it a lot of places because it's not overly yeah. large. And we'll it's say, good for one person because you can just hover right over it. Making your game contained is more of a flex than making your game gigantic. That's facts. Just gonna put it out there. Just gonna put it out there. At least for us too. Unsolicited advice from the Rose Murph. If a game is smaller than I thought it was gonna be, I am more excited for it. Yeah, exactly. Facts. Um, that is Legacy U. It's really, really, really good, especially like solo games. Um, and so let's go ahead and get into number four. Number four is the best kind of chaos. Oh yeah. And this is uh, Thunder Road Vendetta. It's barely contained chaos. Barely contained, but it is contained. It's not just complete it's, chaos. No, no, no. This is a game, this is kind of like a Mad Max uh, racing game where you yeah. are essentially racing to get to the end of the road. There's this big road, and there's uh, different ways the roads can like set up and stuff like that. And you all have kind of like your like post-apocalyptic like gang of cars. Yeah. Very Mad Max. They're all armored up and whatnot. Yeah, and you're like shooting each other and stuff. But this game is pure chaos because you're doing stuff and you're moving down, but you have a couple different kinds of cars, like a medium car, a small car, and a big car, and you're constantly shooting other cars or like ramming into them. And it's got this really cool car stacking mechanic yeah. where when you like ram into a car, stack up, like your car up. will stack on the other, and a big car can stack on top of a little car. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna have to roll these dice um, or is it flip over cards? You, you'll roll dice to kind of determine the outcome of the collision yes. that just happened. So you'll say, uh, you roll these dice, it'll tell you either the top car or the bottom car is going to move out of that space and then a direction die. So you're either going to move backward or back yeah. and left or just to the left or forward. So you don't know when and you get in a collision be... if you're moving or the other car yeah. or whatever. And it can be good. <laughs> it can be really bad. You might run right into a cliff and You might run your right car. off the board and, or go into the void and die. Or you That's might get good. stuck in some mud. Or it might push you forward and you're like, oh, cool, now I'm ahead. This is great. Yeah. And it's just the perfect amount of chaos. And there's like... So really cool stuff, and some of the expansions gives like each uh, player like a special ability, which is cool. Very There's nice. There's some cool ones where it's like a motorcycle gang and like a big rig truck yeah. and stuff. It's just all this cool <laughs> stuff. But the thing I love about this game is because it's every single time we played this game, there's been at least one moment that was just like, oh my god! Like yeah. there was one time where like Mike got, I think it was in the playthrough. We have a playthrough. We'll put a little card up here for it. Where I think it was you or me. There's a whole big void section. We fall in the void. That car is destroyed. Vaporized. And like. The car got shot and jumped over the entire void. Yeah, I imagine barrel rolled. Barrel rolled over and landed on like the edge of the board and was able to keep going. And it just, that's just naturally how it happened. It, just, it moved that many spaces. <laughs> and it's just, this is like the perfect game for our level of chaos because we yeah. love to be chaotic in games. And that's the whole point of this game. And it's so much fun. But the game around it is just really good on top of that. Yeah, it's a racing game where you can either win the race or you can just be the only car left on Whatever the you want. road. And that's just super duper fun. It's chaotic, but like if you were to collide cars, it's going to be chaotic, so I don't mind the randomness. I think it's yeah. hilarious. I think it's so funny. So good. There's a lot of upgrades you can get with the the you know Kickstarter version that came out. Yeah, it's yeah. ridiculously fun. It's dumb fun. I love it so much. Thunder Road Van Dad is number four. It's incredibly fun. Let's go to get number three. Number three is another Garfield game that got a two for so far. This is Scholars of the South Indeed. Tigers. Now, full disclosure, this one is not out yet, but... Uh, Garfield Games has a really good track record with their Kickstarters, which are eff effectively pre-orders, and they're yeah. completely open about that. This game that. will be out in 2023. This game will be out in 2023. So last year we did this with Wayfarers as well. We'll put it on the list because, like, I know it's going to come yes. out uh, this year because they're just on top Other of Other Kickstarters stuff. were like, good luck, we'll wait. Yeah. <laughs> Scholars of the South Tigris is the, the second game in the South Tigris trilogy. We had Wayfarers of the South Tigris. Yeah. Of course, this is the third trilogy they're doing. The will North Inventions be the, the list Kingdom. next year? Probably. Oh, God, I hope it comes out next year. That'd be so exciting. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Scholars of the South Tigris is a really interesting um, game in that it... How does semi co op in a weird way? There is a, sh they have this idea they've been working on of a shared infrastructure, meaning yes. we all can use each other's stuff to help complete our individual goals. Yes. So this is a game all about ultimately translating scrolls and acquiring knowledge. We want yes. to translate scrolls from various different languages using interpreters uh, into Arabic, uh, which is spoken in the, you know, game. And, um, 
you have to use translators to do that. So you might have translators that speak like Sanskrit and Greek. Yeah. And then you can go to someone who speaks, go to a different interpreter who speaks Greek and Arabic. So you can create a chain and through that you can get back yeah. to the language the you need to be able to speak. Originally was in was in Sanskrit. Sanskrit say, so you yeah. had to translate to Greek and then Greek to Arabic like that. Yeah, yeah. So what's really fun is that shared infrastructure is I can do that and use those interpreters, but I can use interpreters that I have employed. Yep. Nick can use uh, interpreters that I've employed as well, or yep. I can use Nick's interpreters, or there's neutral interpreters, and you have to pay a little extra yeah. to use someone else's interpreter, but it's something that we can all use. There's these scrolls out, you know, that are kind of represented abstractly, to be fair, <laughs> but they're from afar, and you can take a travel action to bring them to the houses of wisdom, yeah. which will give you a benefit for bringing that yeah. scroll back home but it's not your scroll it's not your scroll it's yeah. in the house of wisdom so nick might be the one who actually translates that scroll yeah uh and so there's you know kind of things like that where it's just like we're all working together a, yeah. together but we're hoping to be the one that comes out on top or like, contributes the most like we just we just played inventions which is the new vitalis yes. Serta game and it's thing. kind of got a similar thing yeah. where it's like you can present an, an invention idea but someone else can invent it it's a very interesting idea yeah but then this one's got this really interesting like dice, so the whole South Tiger series is about dice. Yes. And so this one's got this really wild dice manipulation modification thing where you have workers and you can add workers to your dice to increase the dice value if it matches, or you can use it to like change the color of the dice and certain things require certain colors. You can have the primary colors like red, uh, red, blue, and yellow. But then you also have the secondary colors, purple, orange, yeah, and green. Blend them and things. And so if you put out a blue dice, a blue three, and then a red, three, you then have a purple six. Yeah. And so there's like this wild, and so it's this, it's a pretty heavy game. Yes. Because you're just like, okay, I need to get a green one. How can I get a green one? Okay, I can add this blue one to this white die to make it blue, and I can add this yellow one to this white die to make it yellow. Now I have a green, and it's just, yeah. it gets wild. The ability <laughs> to like mitigate and manage those dice and the colors and stuff and the values creates a lot of interesting yeah. choices and adds some, some of that brain burn. Yeah. What's kind of nice is there's only kind of like four types of actions yes. you can do. You can, you can work with interpreter, translate stuff, travel. Uh, it, so there's not a ton of actions because no. you're using so much brain power. Yeah. Uh, doing you're like bumping tracks. Those tracks will yeah. then start giving you like abilities and Income, stuff like that. And Income stuff like that. and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's just so, so good. Again, Garfield... Man, Garfield, their track record at this point is ungodly good. It really, just keeps yeah. getting better. And they've announced a whole couple couple more things that we're just like, we just played the new Shipwrights. Yes. Of the, uh, shipwrights of the North Sea, which is like super good. So it's just like, Garfield is, I mean, the publisher to look out for. And I think everyone yeah. pretty much does at this point look out for him because it's I like, would. yeah, Scholars of Hyrus is so, so good. Uh, that's number three. Um, let's go ahead and get number two. Very impatiently waiting for number two. It yes. should be here any day. Like, and I just maybe even today. We I don't want know. it now. <laughs> this is the Grand Hod, the deluxe master set Give which Gordon Dice did. Uh, they've done a few different uh, deluxe versions of other games, and Legrand has been the most recent. Yeah, Legrand uh, has been around uh, for a while. I guess outside yeah. of Teotihuacan, which just ran, but this is the next one to deliver, I should yes. say. Yes. Uh, so this is Legrand has, of course, a, a classic game, which prior to this uh, crowdfunding campaign last year, we had never played. No, we had not, yeah. A classic game that has these quadruple use cards. You can use them around and basically slot them on any Ugh. one of the four sides of your uh, farm board. You're running a farm. Uh, to give them different abilities. They can be like a little contract or a farm extension or a crop to grow or a player power. Uh, so there's all these fun decisions so cool. with these cards. And you're ultimately trying to fulfill contracts yeah. uh, of types of goods and things that you, you can You kind of make. deliver your goods to like the town, yeah, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're kind of supplying the town with goods, yeah, yeah. With, from the farm. Uh, and it's just... A beautifully done kind of remaster on a yeah, game. Yeah, the new one's gorgeous. Yeah, the old yeah. one didn't look bad either, but the no. new one looks really amazing. And then they've added a ton of uh, modular expansion yes. content from a bunch of guest designers, including like Stefan Feld and yeah. stuff. And that's what has us really excited. We played with a couple of the smaller ones. Yeah, and they're really good. And they're really, really cool. So now there's just like all this more uh, content to explore, ways to kind of cater your game to the vibes you like with those modular expansions. Mm -hmm. There's just a ton of fun it's stuff. So it's just a classic that's made, been made even better. Yeah, and the game itself is just great. I mean, again, yeah. it's just like, it's classic it so Euro much. stuff, but it's like we love multi-use cards. And these are, again, quad-use cards. It's yes. like they're either going to be some kind of farm upgrade or some kind of like farm part, like a vineyard or something like that. Again, an, uh, a um, contract you're trying to do or a special power. And just each card, you're like... Oh gosh, you how want am I to do all of them? How of am I going to use this yeah. one? I really would like to get some more pigs and put it over here, but no, I need to get great. It's just like, <laughs> it's so, so good. And it does a little thing that I wish more games would do because I just love this concept. It's like, 
your resources are just these little hexagonal discs kind of things. These little cylinders, yeah. And depending on where that is, it's that thing. So if it's over with the pigs, that's now a pig. If it's over here on a, a vineyard, that's now a grape. And it's just a simple way to make one little just piece it's economical. Work. It's yeah, economical. you know, I, I, I like that. I just think it's yeah. nice to be like, oh, this is just wherever it is, it's that thing. Yeah, the original did that as well. Yeah. And I think it's something that's actually really nice yeah. because like we could have chits for everything and that's great too, but it becomes a lot. Yeah. Uh, and I just like the idea that it's, it's, a, it's a flexible piece yeah. and it works really well and it doesn't make it seem like cheap or lame no, or whatever. To me, it's really great because it's going on these like nice cards and stuff. Yeah. yeah. But the the Legrand has a great game. The Deluxe Master set is so good. Again, it yeah. should be here really any day now. We are just like so impatiently waiting for I, it. I just hope that's already shipped and we just didn't get a notice. Oh I wanted to, I want to be surprised. Yes, when it indeed. Arrives. <laughs> that is number two, though. There's one that we I think at least as of right now we are super 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 into. So let's go ahead and get into it. What's number one, Mikey? Number one is a game that we've been waiting for <laughs> for, for a, a long, long time. time. <laughs> we bought this game, or backed it, I should say, in January of 2020, and then the world changed. This is Darwin's Journey. It is. Uh, this is a game that finally delivered to us a couple months ago, and honestly, we didn't get to play it for quite a Until while very after recently, yeah. it arrived. <laughs> Um, but this is a game uh, that you, where you are recalling your adventures with Charles Darwin. Yes. Uh, you know, fellow scientists and things, naturalists. You were his cat. Yeah, you were his cat. Like, yeah. I was the boat. I was the beagle. <laughs> like, it was the, it's, um, like, it's like vast where everyone's just yeah, like trying to attack it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Darwin's Journey is, is a, a game where you are going around doing research uh, on different species as you kind of go... Uh, to these various islands. You can hike around the islands, mm -hmm. you can sail kind of in that area on your ship, uh, and you can research species, uh, send you know samples of those species to a museum to be further studied and stuff like that. There's a whole bunch of things you can do yeah. in this game. And what's really fun is it does this really interesting thing of using workers that you can sort of power up power up as the game goes. You're gonna be collecting these wax seals, which are gonna be of, of different colors. There's a wild color as well. And as you add more and more wax seals to a certain worker, when you go to use that specific worker, you have access to different action spots because a lot of the juiciest action spots are going to require you to have many, sometimes, yeah. wax seals of specific colors. Yes. So the more kind of colors you have on a, on a worker, the more flexible they are. Yeah. The more... Or you can hyper specialize and get a bunch of like one color green. So that this worker is really good at the at the explore action, yeah. and that's kind of what you do. So you can you can kind of hyper specialize mm -hmm. and power up your workers as the game goes on, and discover more and more action spots. There's yeah. actually there's there's honestly at the start of the game relatively few relatively action few. spots you can go to, and you will present more action spots. Which then give you a little benefit if someone goes and uses it. Yeah, so it. you essentially there's a whole bunch more, but you can unlock them by putting like yeah. your little lens little. on it, and then yeah, and so now that's now open. And so when you start off, there's actually not that many. You need to put out these lenses so you can actually do more stuff, and it's just cool. There's like it's it's a game that kind of looks really intimidating at first, but actually wasn't that complicated when you get down to the it. The actions themselves are, are pretty, straightforward. pretty straightforward. If you play like worker placement, yeah. midweight euros, but you'll there's just understand so many where you're different. Going avenues in this game that you can go yes. for like and a lot of combos you can yeah, pull off <laughs> yeah tons and tons of combos like because when you're say exploring right you're moving around this island mm -hmm. but you can land on a spot that then allows you to move your boat so then you get to move your boat and your boat can land on a tent spot you can put out a little campsite and then that might allow you to do another you can put together some pretty crazy combos yeah and there's just so many different avenues and the cool thing about the we have like the the collector's edition which also has like a bunch of like little modular mini expansions yep. and then like a pretty big expansion, which is the whole other side of the board. Yes. And from what we've heard, they people were saying like the the expansion is like insanely good. It makes it even better. And we haven't even played with it yet. But Darwin's journey is just like we both, after playing, we're just like, oh, I, I would play this right now. I would play it again immediately because yeah. it was just so interesting. And it's also one of those games where you're like, man, I can tell right now that we aren't great at this, but yes. as you play it, you'll be able to do more and more and more stuff as you start to work that engine and get That's to know it. That's what's fun about it. It's like you will, yeah. you, when you when you can play a game and you can see that you're going to get better and yeah. you can start to see, even at the end of the game, just the first glimpses of like, oh, I could do, go over there, I could do this, I could do that. That is always an exciting yeah. prospect. Well, this game is legs. Yeah, it I mean? seems cool. We are really, really excited for to continue to explore Darwin's Journey. So glad we finally got it played. It's 
It was worth the wait. It was a long wait. That's nice, you know, because one of those you're like, oh god, I hope this is worth it. I really hope so. I bought that half of my board game life ago. Yeah, pretty much. Still good, you know. So nonetheless, that is our top ten games of the year so far that we have played. Um, Again, most of these are out at this point, or or hopefully going to be out very very soon here. But yeah, we'll do another a full top ten games of the year at the end of the year. But it's cool, fun to do these kind of in the middle. It's just it's a nice like. It's a nice kind of cool thing. Agreed. You can see all our patrons. They're scrolling by right now. If you want to check out our Patreon, please make sure to do so. We'll do, again, supplemental top tens. We do um, a little bit of unboxings here and there. We're going to start kind of doing like first impressions on a game yeah. uh, right after we play it for the first time, uh, talking about where are we at with the game after one play. And sometimes that changes uh, after multiple plays, but it's kind of a fun thing. We say Monique and Naveen from Before You Play do, and we think, yeah. like, you know, that's a really cool yeah, it's thing because it's something we do naturally. We finish a game, we start talking about, oh, yeah, this is kind of cool, and yeah, that's kind of totally. neat. I didn't like that so much. Uh, so we want to do some of yeah. those things for you. So make sure to check that out if you want to. Yeah. Um, and then again, let us know what's your favorite game of 2023 that you've played so far. And again, games are coming out this year, or just your favorite game so far, whatever. Yeah, why not? Um, and until next time, I'm Nick. I'm Mike. We'll, we'll see you later, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much for watching that play, not playthrough, uh, gosh, a top 10 of our favorite games of the year so far. Down in the comments, let us know your favorite games of the year so far, or just the favorite game you've played this year. It doesn't even need to be new. Um, and make sure to check out the sponsors, uh, Restoration Games, Lucky Duck Games, and Board Game Geek. Uh, yeah, because they're awesome. That was a good outro, Nick. Awesome. Bye.